very good afternoon to you. Thanks for clicking on to today's edition of the Long Range Discussion for the 14th of February. And uh, I think a few folk have misinterpreted the, my, my statement yesterday talking about the fact that, uh, you know, the, the chance, the likelihood of a prolonged period of snow and cold was indeed, uh, you know, gone. I think that window of opportunity is gone. However, I I really want to emphasise, folks, that I don't believe that winter is gone. Uh, I still think we, we have got a chance of seeing winter weather. I do think... Um, you know, there is every likelihood that we're going to see a few shots of cold air, including up this upcoming weekend. And I also do think that, uh, you know, March can be a, a nasty month for winter weather. You know, a low days are growing longer, nights shorter, and that sun, of course, climbing higher into the sky, which, of course, will radiate more energy down to the surface, warming up those temperatures. The problem is it's harder to get sustained cold waves at this late stage in the winter season. And for that very reason, the sun is stronger, the, the, the days are longer, and, of course, to, in order to, for the atmosphere to get those sub-zero high temperatures by daytime, it's quite a difficult thing for the atmosphere to support at this time of year. Yeah, we can get snow cover, and with snow cover, nights can grow very, very cold still, especially when the conditions are correct. You know, light winds, clear skies, you've got that maximum radiational cooling when you've got those cold air masses in place. But, folks, I, were, I, I, I want to explain to you where I think we've went wrong, or where I think I've went wrong this winter season. Certainly over the first half of the winter season, we've seen a very strongly positive Arctic oscillation. Now, what does that mean exactly? It means a strong polar vortex up over top of the pole. And further south, over the mid-latitudes, we've got a strong jet stream that's blown west to east, transporting that oceanic air across the continents, and of course, shielding that Arctic air up to the north. Now, the persistency in that uh, building of the Arctic Reservoir was one of my major concerns for later down the road. I did believe that we would see a transition, a flip from a, a positive uh, North Atlantic Oscillation and Arctic Oscillation. And that, of course, would buckle the jet stream. We would see uh, blocking areas of high pressure go from the mid latitudes northwards, migrate northwards as it, as they push and pump and transport that mild air northwards, penetrating, splitting apart that strong polar vortex. That, of course, would lead to Arctic air, severe Arctic air, down into the mid latitudes. Now, you say to yourself the question, what happened to our winter? You know, Mark, you said uh, about the North Atlantic Oscillation going negative. Yes, we did actually see a negative North Atlantic Oscillation, believe it or not. The problem is that that blocking, instead of having a blocking high over Greenland, we, we basically had a blocking Azores high, and it was too close to the British Isles. That was the problem. Now, where I think... The, 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 the problem has been this year has stems way back even to last winter. Now, you know, how can that be the case? Well, the cold winter that we did have last year, the dominance of high pressure, and even stemming back to the, the winter of 2009-2010, we've seen a very dry winter season. Now, a very dry winter season led into a very dry summer season. Northern Spain through France up into the south and eastern parts of the British Isles, we've seen very dry conditions, folks. Even in October, September, October, we've seen record-breaking temperatures. What does this mean exactly? Well, the dry soils tends to uh, lead to drying out of the lower and middle uh, atmosphere. Now, what that would uh, suggest to me is that drier atmosphere, led by the dry soils, less moisture actually can feed an enhanced high pressure aloft. Now that Azores high pressure system has been stronger than normal. And the problem is, and my, my own theory behind this, is the fact that we've seen the, the, the very dry summer across Spain, up through France. Remember the record temperatures that we've seen back last summer, and especially back in the autumn season. Colder North Atlantic water temperatures, warmer than normal water temperatures over the North Atlantic can lead 
to more enhanced blocking areas of high pressure. But if you reverse that, we've seen the first cold phase of the, the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, an oscillation of 20 to 30 years, first time in some 25 years that we've actually seen the water temperatures over the North Atlantic colder than normal. So the first part of the winter, we've seen a trough over the North Atlantic, feeding the jet stream, uh, warmer than normal conditions over the Azores. What does that mean? Cold, warm, don't mix. A stronger than normal jet stream. A strong, positive Arctic oscillation led to the stormy action across the British Isles uh, during the first part of the winter time. Snap that. Uh, bring in a negative Arctic oscillation. And of course, you've got a uh, high octane Arctic air. It's been bottled up for that amount of time. Once it spilled south, I said to you, remember, watch out below. And of course, we've seen the, the I believe the relationship between a very dry summer led to a stronger uh, Azores high. The colder water temperatures over the North Atlantic meant the blocking was there, folks, but it wasn't over the North Atlantic. And we then didn't see that cold. Now, if you noticed on, on the models, the, the Azores high, was very persistent, but it was starting to feed that block up over the top of the, uh, Scandinavia. As the Arctic Oscillation flipped negative, we seen Europe fill with brutally cold air. And, of course, that Azores high stopping that cold from going across the UK. It stopped over the low countries. And the problem with the low countries, once that, that Siberian air reached the, the base of that trough over Holland, and Belgium, temperatures grew stronger. That's why we've seen the coldest period um, in, since 1941 across Belgium. That scenario took place. I do believe it was a, a block in Azores high and not a block in Greenland high this time around. And a lot of that is stemmed back to the summertime. We'll, we'll continue to see a dry winter. So it will be interesting to see whether we'll see some very warm weather here in the, the British Isles in the summer ahead and of course on March 31st I will release my winter forecast or my summer forecast should I say for 2012. I hope this hasn't been too much I've had all these ideas floating around my head uh, over the course of today I wanted to share these thoughts with you folks winter is not over yet but of course the sustained prolonged period of severe cold and snow I think that window has left and we won't see that. But it doesn't mean to say we can't get shots of cold and snow uh, during the latter part of February and in through March as well. Over the next few a few days, we're going to see milder conditions, colder chance over the weekend, but milder air returns for next week. So keep checking back and I'll try and keep you up to date. Bye for now.